Hello everyone and welcome to Magic Gathering Strat, I'm Binker B and this will be the last spoiler talk for Dragons of Trakir. The whole set has just been spoiled and I've breezed through all the cards and um, come to the conclusion that there is so so many sweet things to do. Holy crap. Uh, so I've only picked a few cards, uh, you have to check it out for yourself to get the full picture but some of the cards uh, that I've chosen is just good in limited or good in constructed or uh, looks in looking interesting or whatever. So the first one is Myth Realized, I think it was spoiled yesterday maybe, but it's basically an enchantment that you can load up with counters either with mana or with non-creature spells and then for one white you can turn it into a creature with power and toughness equal to the number of counters so many falls in the camp that it's either very good or horribly bad and I'm not really sure where to put it before I've tested it but what it all comes down to is the best place for it would probably be um, a two color control deck or maybe a two color aggro deck but I don't think that's uh, the right place for it maybe but uh, I, I assume control and yeah sure if you can go plain smith realized on turn one that's decent but all you're gonna end up with is a big brawler with no abilities. I just don't see that being that good and what it falls for at least from my point of view is that drawing this on turn 10 is f horribly bad. Just c it's a complete blank. It's worse than a Skryland and it's not good. Well you can play it and add two counters. Yeah but I'm probably getting crushed by a Stormbreath Dragon and I want to uh, find like uh, the blue black dragon or uh, pearl lake ancient or something that has immediate impact and this does not have that so to have it on turn one you need probably four to have it pretty consistently uh, so no I, I don't think it would be that good but uh, maybe maybe let's continue to another white card dragon hunter well as the name suggests he hunts dragons the artwork is so sweet and the card itself is just pushed not for eternal but for standard it's a 2 1 for 1 mana that's good already he's a human warrior the warrior theme in dragons of trakir are pushed beyond belief holy crap there are so many warriors and they're all very potent so there will be a black white warrior deck rest assured of that Anyway, he has protection from dragons. Well, there are most of the dragons fly, so that's not good. But he can block as though he had reach, if it's a dragon. So it's an aggressive beater, and uh, when he's not beating down his stone walls, all the dragons except Stormbreath dragons. So, yeah, <laughs> take that, dragons. You get trumped by a card for one mana. Anyway, it will see play for sure. It's it's actually really good in standard, I think. Illusory, illusory gains. It's a mind control basically, or a control magic, whatever. For five mana, you get to control an enchanted creature, which is, uh, I would say, it's it's really really good in standard. Um, at least as the format has been so far with a slew of uh, mid-range decks with like uh, Polucronos and Stormbreath Dragons and whatever. But this comes with a twist and that's whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control you have to attach this uh, to it so it might not be the best thing to take a Stormbreath Dragon with it so <sighs> I, I'm not sure I'm not sure how good this will be. I mean, 
if they have no cards in hand and you play this on their Polukronos that is like a 7-7 it's really good and then they play an Elvish Mystic and it becomes less good but if you can keep keep the flow going it, it could be okay but I'm not I'm not sure it's too random for me but uh, I'll probably test it at least Uyutai's Breath I took this um, card uh, on here just because of limited I mean holy crap in every format I've played so far uh, considering limited frost breaths and uh, crippling chills have been decent frost breath in the right deck crippling chill in basically every deck since it uh, replaces itself but this is a frost breath that replaces itself with another frost breath that's so good so for three man you get to tap down like one of their attackers so they have like one guy left well are they going to attack no that's no point uh, if they play another guy you get to tap down that as well and just smash I, I think it's really good uh, it's comparable to the uh, will of the Naga card but you know how much it, how much this will cost so it doesn't compete with other delve cards which I think is important I think this will be a really good card to replace Crip and Chill with yeah because Crip and Chill was in cons right oh whatever it's really good and it will play a pretty big role in limited damnable pact so this is like a black fireball uh, I think this is a fantastic card actually but not for control not for control because you probably can't afford to lose the life but I can see this being a one-off in many of the black midrange decks and you could probably have at least one more in the board just tapping out like drawing four cards for six mana in a midrange deck is really sweet and if the match goes long you can just burn them out that's pretty rare for black or for any color besides red I guess of course if they don't die they get to draw a new hand so that's not good but uh, a card that is both good in a grindy situation and as a finisher is pretty uh, desirable so I would be surprised if this did not see a lot of plain standard actually Blood Shin Rager. I took this as the prime example of the new warrior cards. I just can't get my head around this because it's a 2 2 for 2, which is okay for limited and not really that fantastic for um, constructed mainly standard unless it has something else. And this has the right creature type, it's a warrior, and it makes it basically impossible for your opponent to block. Each warrior creature you control can't be blocked this turn except by two or more creatures. So you go like turn one, blood of champion, turn two, this, turn three, whatever, and just smash away, and they can't block. It's it's just no way. Sylvan Caratids, no. Uh, Corsair of Crufix, no. That's just not going to happen. And um, the the most uh, threatening part about this is that. Usually when you're playing an aggressive deck you go like 1 drop, 2 drop removal because you need to clear the way to keep the damage going but here you go 1 drop, 2 drop and you can still attack and then go a three, play a 3 drop then you play the second blocker then you kill it it's just it, it warps you a whole turn basically I think it's this card is really really good then you go turn 4 raider spoils and just crush and yeah, this will be the bane of many mid-range decks, and uh, I like that. Foul Tongue Shriek. I'm not sure, but f from my point of view, this is this is so. I I'm not sure. It's it's just so good. It just yes, I know it, it has a condition that you have to have a pretty decent board. But for one mana, I mean, if you only have like two creatures, it's still a very good deal for one mana. Two, it's a four point life swing, but let's say that you don't care about the life that much. 
it's still like almost a lava spike at instant speed. I think it's very strong. So uh, combining that with the warrior we just looked at, like one drop, two drop, two drop this. Not the best use, but if that's like the worst case scenario, I just sign me up. And if you can go like, let's say more do tokens or whatever, like some dragon fodder and um, uh, hordling outburst, and then play this. There was another red card. We can look at that uh, as well. I think we have time. Uh, but I mean, we still have perforos. I mean, jeez. You can just burn your opponent out from very high life totals. I think this card is um, pretty nice and it has potential, so keep a, keep an eye out of that. For one mana it's good. Twin Bolt, it's a uh, fork bolt for one more mana but it's instant instead, so not much more to say. I think it's uh, it's uh, the right mana cost for once. Because they couldn't really do uh, one more mana, because then it would just be a uh, bad arc lightning, really bad. And they couldn't really have it at one mana because that's too good. And they couldn't add another damage because that would be too good as well. So I think it's 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 a fair card, and uh, I think it will be decent in standard, and it's a good choice to have. But it's competing with a lot of burns, so. Maybe not. The last card I had picked out was Volcanic Vision, and uh, a good friend of mine uh, posted it on his Facebook uh, page. Uh, and I think it's actually a very strong card. It's it's expensive, but um, it's the kind of expensive I'm willing to to uh, accept because for seven mana you get a card back of your choice. I would prefer a dig through time, maybe a treasure cruise, but one of those. Then you get to wrath their whole board pretty easily because they cost so much mana, seven, eight, nine mana. But then I was thinking about this card, and maybe like yes, sky control. I could see a scenario where where I clear the board, they rebuild it, and I have a Narset in play, for example. And if I give this rebound, I'm 99% sure that you get to cast this again. Because it has to be exiled upon resolution, but rebound is an option for you then. You can choose to exile it with the rebound, and the card only cares that it got exiled. So I'm pretty sure you can go like kill something, go, they rebuild the board, dig through time, untap, give this rebound, play it, return dig through time, wrath the board, pass, and then you get to play this again. So they can't like rebuild once more. So uh, I'm, I'm, I think this could be uh, decent, but probably only as a one-off, pretty expensive. I just have to check out that last card that I was thinking about. Uh, let's see here. Where are you? I think it was two mana. There it is. Impact Tremors. And then red enchantment for two. Whenever a creature ends the battlefield under your control, Impact Tremors deals one damage to each opponent. That could be that could be the way to win. Like you're playing Raised Alarms, Dragon Faller, Hordling Outbursts. Um, I don't know, opponent back brigade, probably not, but I mean, token makers, this, and that black uh, attack s thing. So, every token maker you have deals between 2 and, probably 2 and 3 damage. And then you attack, a few of your creatures will get through for even more damage, and you burn them with that uh, 1 mana spell for even more damage. I think that could be it. And Perforous could be something to keep an eye out for too. That could be just so much accidental burn that many opponent just, just dies. So maybe. Um, yeah, but I think that was it. I think uh,
Dragon's of Dark Care is looking way too sweet, so I probably have to buy a few boxes just because. Uh, I just ordered some Modern Masters 2, but I will have to scramble up some more money, I think, because Jesus. Sweet Planeswalkers, Crazy Rares, Cool Dragons. We're living in good times, folk. Good times. Uh, thank for watching, and uh, I hope you have enjoyed those spoiler videos. Um, I would have preferred to have a friend of mine uh, Skyping at the same time so we could discuss cards more in depth, making it like almost like a podcast. We have done a few uh, in the past, but we did it, we did them in Swedish, and uh, well, mainly the friend I was doing them with. <laughs> went more and more unavailable so we quit that <coughs> but yeah uh, thank you for watching and I hope you have enjoyed the videos uh, please go to your pre local pre-releases and have a fantastic time uh, and uh, for, for now have a nice weekend